What about the chef? David, I can't tell what's going on in his mind. I'm sure he thinks as I do. Now, does that satisfy you? I'm sorry, Aunt Elizabeth, but I don't think you're telling me the truth. I do not lie to you, David. You really think that Mr. Malloy was murdered? But you keep telling everybody he wasn't, because that's the way you want it to come out. David, David, what am I going to do with your wild imagination? Mr. Malloy was killed, just like you really think. But Bert Devlin had nothing to do with it. I never said he did. But you think it. All right, David. Go upstairs. Go to your room and stay there. Lie in the bed, read a book, do your studies. I don't care, but just go upstairs. Hello, is the sheriff there? This is Mrs. Stoddard. I wanted to speak to him to find out when he expected to receive the coroner's findings. Oh, I see. Well, how long ago was he called in? Yes, I understand. Then the final decision should come quite soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Oh, hi, Pop. You want some coffee? No, thanks, darling. I just want to rest my feet. Oh. Well, better here than in the blue whale. Yeah. Oh, look at that brow. What have you been doing, thinking deep artistic thoughts? You are looking at a man who has been thinking deep realistic thoughts. Oh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> hey, did you hear the latest scoop? Mm. I understand the coroner is going to make his report on the Malloy thing today. Don't say. Well, that's good. Be nice to have the thing cleared up. <laughs> Not from what I hear. I understand that the... Maggie, ma do your old man a favor, will you, and... Uh, Keep your hotel gossip for the back stairs. Huh. Life is far more important than the gabble gabble of uh, idle tongues. <laughs> How can they be idle if they're gabbling? All right, make fun of me. <laughs> but seriously, darling, life has much more meaning than what simply happens in a small town coroner's office. Not in Collinsport, that's for sure. Then maybe you ought to leave. When? Now? Will I have time to change my uniform? Oh, I'm trying to talk seriously to you about your future, and you carry on like it's a two-a-day vaudeville act. Hey. You mean it, don't you? Tell me, Maggie. Have you ever, uh, given any thought to your life after I'm gone? No. Not really. Well, it's a great big world, Maggie. And, uh... Serving coffee in a restaurant and a hotel is uh, not very much of a future for a bright and attractive young girl like you. You've been sitting in a corner and brooding again, haven't you? <sighs> hey, I know what's eating at you. You did hear the rumor, didn't you? Well, I'm not worried about it. The sheriff's an honest, fair man. He's bound to realize you couldn't possibly have anything to do with it. Now, you just sit there. I'm going to make us both some coffee. Oh, Maggie, wait a minute. What, uh, what rumor is this? About the decision from the coroner. I understand that it's going to be homicide. Well, who told you this? Well, I don't know. Some customers. I mean, it's all over town. I thought for sure that you'd heard about it. No. All right, like you said, Pop, just a lot of gabble-gabble. Yeah, sure. Well, let's have that coffee, huh? Believe me. There are a couple of people in this town that have a lot more to worry about than you do. Hello? Oh, Roger. Have you heard anything? No. All I know is that the sheriff went to the coroner's office. Well, how long ago was that? Well, if he's left the coroner already, we should have had a, a, have a decision very shortly, wouldn't you think? Well, of course. If I hear anything, I'll call you immediately. Fine. Goodbye. David, where do you think you're going now? For a walk. I thought you'd be studying. I will, Aunt Elizabeth. I promise. I just want some air. You can get all the air you want after your schoolwork. Please, Aunt Elizabeth, just five minutes? Not even for one minute. Now, march right back up those stairs. Where are you 
going? David, come back here. D David, David. Hello, Sheriff. I was, I was just trying to call you. <laughs> well, and now here I am. Well, uh, David was certainly in a hurry to get someplace. Yes, yes, he was. Mrs. Stoddard? Yes? May I uh, come in? Oh, yes, certainly. Yeah, that's right, Harry. I'm up at Collinwood. Yes, I came right here from the coroner's office. Yeah, just what you and I thought he would. Well, I'll probably be here about 15 minutes or so, all right? In case anything comes up. Right. Sorry, Mrs. Stoddard. I just like to let the office know where I am in case anyone wants to borrow a cup of sugar. I just heard you say you'd come directly here from the coroner's office. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. Has the coroner reached a decision? Mrs. Stoddard, I know how close you and Bill Malloy were. I mean, I know that he was not just the manager of your fishing fleet in Cannery, but that you were real old friends. Now, what I'm doing is not strictly regulation, but, well, I figured there was just no harm in coming directly to the person who would be most interested in what happened to Bill. Then the matter is settled. Mrs. Stoddard, if Bill was murdered, you would want the person who did it, the guilty person, apprehended and punished, wouldn't you? No matter who he was? Yes, of course. But you wouldn't want innocent people hounded and bothered if there was no need to, no matter how the facts appeared to you. No, uh, of course not. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mrs. Stoddard, because... And I hope the rest of the people in this town feel that way. Because I'd like to close the file on this case right now and just forget it ever happened. Then the coroner doesn't think it was homicide. No, ma'am. Accidental death due to drowning. Then it's over. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's over. The terrible thing is it'll never end, no matter what the coroner decides. You, Mr. Evans, are the leading pessimist of our time. And you are the worst waitress. <laughs> oh. oh, you have a customer. That's David Collins. Oh, Roger's son? <laughs> He's a cute kid, isn't he? Hi, David. Did you come in town for the ice cream? No, I was looking for Mr. Devlin. Well, he's not in here. He's not in his hotel room, either. I called him on the house phone and nobody answered. Well, if it's that important, you can always leave a message with the desk clerk. No, it's all right. <laughs> Come on over and meet my dad and I'll get you some ice cream on the house. You know what that means? Yep, it's free. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor? I don't think I want any right now. Thank you anyway. Oh. <laughs> this is my dad. And this is David Collins, who doesn't want any ice cream. Mr. Collins, Mr. Evans. How do you do, Mr. Collins? Hello. <laughs> Okay, David, up on the chair. Whether you like it or not, you're going to get a super-duper Sunday. Sit down, son. May I call you David? <laughs> sure. David, did anyone ever tell you that you have a great smile? No. Well, you have, and I'd love to paint it someday. Are you an artist, Mr. Evans? Am I an artist? Son, I can take a raging storm and turn it into something beautiful. I can take a buttercup and breathe eternal life into it. Gee, you must be a genius. Well, not quite. How's your father these days? Oh, do you know him? Well, in a manner of speaking. How is he? He's all right, I guess. Huh? I think I have to be going. Hey, not so fast. What about your ice cream? I don't think I have time. Thank you. Glad to meet you, Mr. Evans. The pleasure was all mine. Nice boy. Yeah. Come on, Pop. Go off your diet for the day. Too bad he has to be part of that family. They're uh, really in for it. Pop, come on. If you don't eat it, I will. And I shouldn't. Well, you know, Maggie, even if the rumor is wrong, even if the coroner decides it's accidental death, that it's not going to make any difference up in Collinswood. Why not? It'll be over, won't it? You think so? You think Burke Devlin will accept that? You watch, Maggie. If the coroner doesn't rule homicide, 
Burke Devon will go on a rampage. And he won't stop until there's nothing left, including the boy. Hello, Burke. David, what are you doing here? The devil are you doing here? I can't see you. Well, don't you knock on the door or call up on the house phone? How many more of you are in there? Just me. I called on the house phone, but you weren't in. So you decided to come up and wait, huh? Are you mad? A little bit. Not too much, but a little bit, okay? I'm sorry. I thought you'd be glad to see me. Hey, I am. I am. It's good to see an old friend on a day like today. Now tell me, how'd you do it? How'd you get in? It was easy. Yeah? Well, tell me about it. Next person who sneaks in here might be a deadly enemy. Like my father, you mean. Come on, tell me what your secret is. Well, uh, remember the last time I tried to come in? The maid was cleaning and she saw me? Mm-hmm. Well, this time, I waited until she was through cleaning in that room, went into the bedroom to clean. I ran in, and that's all. The front door was open? It's always open when the maid's cleaning. Hey, had the place really cased, huh? Pretty cool, wasn't it? It's also against the law. No, it wasn't. Nothing's against the law unless you get caught. Who told you that? You did. I think I better get us both a cool drink. Coming up, baby. Nice and cool. Burke Devon special, right? Yeah, hey, you remember. A lot of different fruit juices all mixed together. It's good. Yeah, well, it's a little better than that moral philosophy you say I taught you. That what? Davy, I... I can't imagine myself ever telling you that it was all right to... to do anything you wanted to as long as you could get away with it. That's what you said. Well, I was wrong. Burke, did you ever kill anybody? Huh? I want to know, did you ever kill anybody? Well, not that I remember. Why? I knew you didn't. That's what I told my Aunt Elizabeth. Uh, you lost me. That's what I came here for. To tell you that I knew you didn't kill Mr. Malloy. Who says I did? Well, Aunt Elizabeth doesn't come right out and say it. She doesn't even say he was murdered. But uh, she's thinking it. Is that what you mean? Oh, she says that he fell off a cliff and drowned, but she's really thinking he was murdered. Uh, in her mind, you mean? Well, I know you didn't kill anybody anyway. How do you know that, Davy? You didn't. You're right. And faith like that deserves a refill, huh? You couldn't have done it, because my father did. My father killed Mr. Malloy. Liz, you'll have to excuse me, but right after you phoned, I had to rush right home. It is good news, isn't it? Good news! The coroner's decision is the most wonderful news I've heard in years. Accidental death due to drowning. I think I'll have it cast in bronze. Have you told anyone else about it? No, the sheriff just left a half an hour ago. Oh, I suppose it's all over Collinsport by now. Oh, I would like to see the faces of one or two people. You know, it was generally believed to be homicide, you know. Well, I doubt very much if it's uh, generally known yet, Roger. The sheriff said it might be hours before the facts findings were made public. Well, for you and me, it's all over. All the questions and suspicions can be laid to rest. And at last, poor Bill Malloy can rest in peace. Oh, tell me, Liz, now that it's over, you were worried for me, weren't you? Should I have been? Well, you harbored a teeny suspicion that I had something to do with Bill Malloy's death. That's the truth, isn't it? Well, there's no point in talking about it now, Roger. As you say, it's over. Yes, amen, it's over. And now life can pursue its normal course. Would you join me in a drink, Liz? 
I don't think so, thank you. Oh, but this is a special occasion. Come on, Liz. Roger, a moment ago you asked me if I thought you were involved in Bill's death. Well, yes, it, it did cross my mind. Well, then you should be delighted to have been proved wrong. I'm delighted that neither of us have to face that problem any longer, yes. All right, then, let's toast to it. To the perception and judgment of the coroner, long may he hold his office. You're not drinking, Liz. I begin to wonder if I have as much to celebrate as you have. Well, I can imagine that's true. After all, the sheriff wasn't pressing down with you with all those questions. An innocent man needn't be afraid of questions. Oh, now, for heaven's sakes, Liz, this is a happy day. Don't spoil it with soul-searching. Come on, drink up, please. David, I forgot all about him. Oh, well, that should make you happy in itself. No, I'm serious, Roger. I'm worried about him. You seem determined to spoil my good mood. Well, we had an argument, and I sent him to his room. Then he ran out of the house just before the sheriff arrived. You know, that's exactly what I think I'll do. A good turn on the cliff. That's exactly what this day requires. I'll see you in a while. But what about David? He hasn't come back yet. I leave the problem of my wandering son to you, my dear sister. But he was talking about Burke Devlin. I leave that problem also to you. Today, on this glorious day of days, neither David nor Burke exist for me. I knew it was my father the very day that Mr. Malloy disappeared. How did you know that, Dave? If I tell you, you make fun of me. Have I ever made fun of you before? No. Well, then tell me. Why do you think your father killed Bill Malloy? They told me. Who? The voices. It's true, Bert. They come into my room at night and they talk to me. They told me my father did it. I see. I knew you wouldn't believe me. I even see it in the crystal ball. You're pretty lonely up in that big old house, aren't you, Davy? They talk to me all the time. I'm sure they do, Dave. And you believe me? I mean, about my father. Well, let me put it this way, Davy. If I thought you were right, I... Well, it'd be a terrible thing for me to say to you. Because he's my father? Well, I don't care. Gee, Burke, I wish you could come up and live with me at Collinwood. We could have such fun together. Yeah, well, I don't think your Aunt Elizabeth would care for that very much, huh? Well, maybe after this Malloy thing is cleared up, she'll change her mind. I don't think so. Hey, Davy, look. Do you, uh, do you know what a coroner is? No. Well, he's a man who's going to make a big decision today. And when he does, your Aunt Elizabeth and your father, especially your father, well, they're not going to be very happy about it at all. He's the man that's going to say Mr. Malloy was murdered and somebody has to go to jail for it. That's the man. And that's exactly what he's going to say. Does that mean you can never come and live at Collinwood? Oh, now, I wouldn't say that. I might surprise you and your aunt one of these days. You mean it? You bet I mean it. Hey, now, uh... You grab those glasses and go in the kitchen and fix us up another concoction. And I'll get rid of uh, whoever it is that wants to bother us. Well, speak of angels and they appear. I want to talk to you, Burke. Well, I'm in the middle of a very important meeting, but uh, come on in anyway. Mm -hmm. 